just going to wait until we get confirmation of the live stream. And there it is. 8 a.m. March 1st, 2020. Welcome, everyone. This is Chicho. And today we're doing a live stream and we titled it Analyzing the Data for COVID-19, the Wuhan Corona Virus Open Discussion. And we're going to keep it chill, ASMR. Now, just to give everyone a little intro as to what this is about, uh, basically the images that you see here, the top video that you see here, that titled Exponential Growth of the Wuhan Coronavirus, uh, graphing rate of viral infections. This is a sort of a topic that came up uh, during a ASMR math live stream that we're doing sort of a tutoring session, a couple hours, I make myself available. And the concept of exponential growth came up. And what we ended up doing was just right off the bat, just whatever data we had, which was basically a couple of weeks into people realizing what was going on and some data being released. We looked at some of the numbers and we thought that this was going to be sort of a what it meant if it was going to be exponential growth so our first video we put out regarding COVID-19 was that one and then we followed it up followed that up because data was becoming more and more available we followed that up with another live stream where we analyzed the data that we had up to that point which was 17 days worth of data so what we ended up doing um, i took the data into a table and we ended up graphing some of the parameters just to see what exponential growth looks like and some of the other things that was going on so we look at that they looked at that data and i ended up putting out both the full-on live stream video released it on bitshoot on youtube as well as an edited version where we took out the data and uh, just a segment where we're talking about the data and um, sort of took it into my video editor and added a, a couple of different animations or features in there so things were could be highlighted better and we released that as well so there's a shortened version when we look at the data and a long stream version when we look at the data and have an open discussion what we're doing right now is the live stream uh, version of this and hopefully if i get a chance i will edit out the data that we're going to take a look at and upload it by itself just the data data alone right looking at the data looking at the charts and the graphs okay and the discussion we're going to do later on after we look at some of the stuff that's my quick little intro to this of uh, what we're up to and uh, we're going to slowly see start people rolling in Eduardo, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. Today is Sunday morning, 8 a.m. my time. So I'm assuming there isn't going to be too many, too much activity here like there was yesterday. There was a fair bit of people here yesterday. Um, so that was fun. A lot of discussion took place regarding current events. Let us be serial. <laughs> Let us be serial. I imagine death so much it feels like a memory. Luca, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, good to be back. Good to have you back, Luca. Good to have you back. Uh, I've been looking at the data since yesterday. I was sort of compiling the stuff as we were going on a day-to-day -day basis, and I went through the data. And once you end up graphing your data set, you can see discrepancies, you can see flaws, you can see errors and stuff like this. So I went through a couple of filters and made sure that we had the accurate, as accurate data as possible. And for those that are watching this video on, uh, after it's been, after the live stream, after it's been loaded to BitChute, YouTube, or any other platform, there'll be a link in the description of the video to these initial two videos we put out, three videos really, and I'll provide a link to the timestamp as to when we're going to start looking at the table and the charts as well. It seems to have gone linear now, thankfully. Uh, Luca, the kicker is uh, there's uh, we can't have faith in the data anymore. I'll show you why it looks linear to a certain degree because China is not really updating their data. If you look at the data outside of China, it's exponential. So it's not necessarily linear because the the virus is going linear the or the 
are not is reducing or what not how many people are being affected it's going linear because the data is not available or the data data that we're being provided with is flawed okay and you can see that if you look at uh, certain parts of the data right we'll go through it as soon as we give people about 10 minutes to roll in uh, to the live stream i know it's a little early for uh, for people on the west coast on a sunday morning of all of all times right uh, but i thought it was a good time to start this lonely piggy how are you doing life is good man looking at data i'm always happy looking at data so when i started looking at data i just i went off a little bit too far on this there's a couple of uh, three columns i took out actually uh to be able to talk about the data early stream to show sleepy waves yeah was hoping to be done with my uh, workout workout and uh what do you call it listen to coronavirus <laughs> data analysis uh, stream i do for my workouts I, I sometimes listen to actually not sometimes a lot of the times i listen to either lectures or news briefings or uh, new segments independent of course right great lasagna good morning chicho i'm loving being a regular viewer on your streams again hope you're doing well thank you very much and welcome back to becoming a regular viewer on our streams good afternoon olive hello hello salutations uh, to europe from canada i'm more worried about the economic social panic effects rather than the health implications luca for sure there, there's huge economic um, wave that's coming that we've already sort of been hit with um, so there's going to be different things happening we mentioned this by the way Luca we talked about this in during previous live streams that um, that this was something that was going to happen right cool Leo how are you doing hola muchachos Nikki Hickey how are you at work this Sunday got a few comics to enjoy uh, image uh, posted in the discord channel nice hope all is well doing well nikki and thanks for the links on the discord for the for the comics listening to mckenna during workout nice that's a great uh, great thing to listen to and robert Antal also is amazing too hello liquid swords great lasagna thank you very much again for the twitch prime sub three months in a row Woo -hoo. <laughs> Hiya, Chicha. Gina Toscala, how are you doing? Hope uh, hope life is treating you well on the Sunday. Who can you say the name again? Eduardo. Uh, Robert Anton Wilson or Terence McKenna? Ra, Robert Anton Wilson. This is the name. Robert Anton Wilson. And there is a. Uh, uh, this book is actually pretty good. It's a musical about Wilhelm Reichenhell. Uh, but uh, Robert Anton Wilson, if you want to listen to a long segment of Raw, and it goes by Raw, R-A-W, he has a seven-hour, I believe, audio interview. It's either seven or 13-hour audio interview. I always get the... Th Cosmos is 13 hours, but uh, I guess uh, Raw is seven hours. Seven-hour audio interview with Robert Anton Wilson. That is fantastic to listen to okay i've listened to it i listen to it every every few years uh just to remind myself of certain things coolio flu season this year is looking scarier than coronavirus to be honest um, the kicker with the flu season when, and the coronavirus is we don't have the data regarding COVID 19 right like we really don't the data was coming in it's not coming in it's flawed you can see in the data where the where the anomalies are um the infection rates we don't know right we have cv in norway now yeah it's gonna by all accounts it's gonna go everywhere unfortunately it it it's already peaking its head in countries and regions where the health infrastructure is not there so that was my main worry right if we look at the data india still i believe still says three it's been saying three infections for the last two weeks now which nobody can should believe those numbers okay 
it's in Africa, it's now in South America. <laughs> Just wait until what the wise is. Nice, will do. Okay. Always streaming when I can't watch. Oh, Randall, I'm so sorry. Oh, go to Discord, Randall. By the way, you're you're one of our main regulars. You've been here a while, Randall. Go to our Discord and post times that are good for you for us to stream and I'll try to accommodate I'll try to set them up during those periods and that goes out to anyone uh, that's here right now that you're watching um, and if there's enough people posting times maybe we'll put out a little calendar and we go with the times that most people can attend uh, I should be able to adjust my schedule a lot of the times coolio that's true a virus in the age of misinformation is a lot more dangerous than a virus in a well-informed populace 100 percent, which is why censorship is detrimental to society right unlike the u.s don't have the infrastructure either i live in new york city and the hospitals here are just trash uh, sleepy waves if the u.s gets hit hard the problem is the cost of health care in the united states so a lot of people that can't afford to get health care to get tested are going to overwhelm the the system right and the infection could possibly explode in the united states right hey chicho how are you in siso 22 doing well we'll do cheers awesome martin i'm working but i'm here right on martin thank you very much we got our mod happening here cool thank you what do you define infrastructure as uh infrastructure everything medical system roads bridges uh, hospitals like everything infrastructure is everything not to mention if you're broke in the u.s and catch coronavirus good luck paying for the medical treatment and the odds are you won't because you can't afford it chicho do you know where most of your viewers are from do you have uh, statistics on that eduardo i do uh majority is from the united states there's no doubt right but i have a lot of viewers coming in from europe like a lot um i have some coming in from russia i got uh like i don't check the locations too much i just do what i do right and p people from everywhere are welcome to come here right so i'm not you know through youtube i've looked at it i haven't looked at it through twitch and through youtube i looked at it like a long time ago right so the, so that that might have changed since youtube's uh, uh censorship filters have kicked in okay let me take down these two and by the way for those of you who are entering in these are two of the previous videos that we did on COVID 19. the top one is basically something that came up during a math live stream we're doing we're looking at how an exponential function may look and as soon as we had more data available which was basically 17 days worth of data we did another live stream on twitch where we where we did exactly what we're about to do now but with 17 days right now we're going to look at data that we have for 41 days which is giving us a better picture of what's really going on okay and there's three videos um that we have already done okay let me take these down so you guys can see the table that i put together if you're here doing a previous live stream where you saw the other videos you'll notice i've added a handful of new columns there was three other columns i was going to include here but the data is i couldn't get accurate data so if i can get my hands on accurate data then we'll add those three columns in the next live stream that we do regarding COVID 19 coronavirus right and we'll most likely do this on a monthly basis just to see um what's going on okay i'm just going to read a little bit of chat and again uh, we're about 15 minutes into the into the stream probably in another five minutes we're going to start looking at the data okay just give people enough time and anyone watching this again on bitshoot youtube or any other platform the link the timestamp will be in the description of this video to tell you when we start looking at the data chichu do you know we're most up 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 uh do you think it's it's a good idea to lock down cities as they were saying that could be a plan here in the uk uh, in CISO, I can't say 
I really can't say because we don't know what what's really going on, right? Like the data out of China, put a multiplier on it, right? What they've been releasing is not accurate. Maybe it was accurate at the beginning or in the middle after a couple of weeks, but it's not accurate anymore, right? So we really don't know what the situation is. So I really can't say what I think should be happening if we lock down cities. I think quarantine zones are legitimate if it's very, very serious, right? If the R naught value, if one person can infect instead of right now, they're assuming the R naught is anywhere between two to four, right? If the R naught is 10, 15, if one person can infect 10 people, eight people, 15 people, 20 people, then you need to set up zones, right? And you need, need to be very proactive in, uh, in testing people and making sure that people are taken care of. And that's the kicker, right? Right now, the kicker is this. Majority of the world does not have adequate health care. That includes the United States. That includes Europe. That includes Western countries that do have adequate health care within reason. The United States is too expensive, but Canada and some other countries have adequate health care to deal with normal everyday events. But what happens when you get something like this where it's a called a black swan event when all of a sudden the system is overloaded, right? How do you deal with that? I have to go write a paper for school. Okay, Olive, have a good stream. Bye bye. Bye, Olive. Thanks for popping by and right on that you're staying on top of your school. Okay. No country is ready to handle an outbreak. Hospitals and medical infrastructures runs at capacity during normal times. Yeah. And Luca, I'm in Canada. I know the hospitals because I have friends, family that work at the hospital. Okay, they're in the medical system right now in Canada. Canadian medical system is running at 150% capacity. It's overloaded, overloaded. Okay, can it handle a five, tenfold increase in capacity? No way. Speaking of that, I will be a, a European viewer in a year and a half. Aha, narrowed down my list to Portugal, Croatia, and Albania. Right on, Coolio. What are you up to? Those are three very different countries. <laughs> Where's the data from? The data I collected from basically three different websites from the World Health Organization. I collected the data. Majority of the data is from the John Hopkins. Okay. Uh, and I've linked the stuff in Discord. Um, I grabbed a lot of data from John Hopkins. I grabbed a lot of data. It's on the other computer, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so there's three different websites that I grab the data from and there's discrepancies between the data. I did three or four websites. Yes, I have different reasons. Good morning, Zare. Good morning. How are you doing? Off topic, but what do you think this peace deal is about uh, uh, Taliban in the US? I think it could be legit because the United States is overextended. So they need to pull back and reinforce certain regions. Um, what it's about, we don't know yet. They've signed peace deals before. We talked a little bit about it yesterday during a uh, current events live streams. Are China had to rapidly build entire hospitals in a few weeks to deal with the overcrowding? Not easy to deal with because of how large their population is, for sure. Do you have uh, compar comparatives that exclude China? Um, yes. I, that's the kicker, right? There's three columns I was looking for data outside of China, mortality rate outside of China or fatality rate outside of China and all that jazz. But the data is very patchy and it's not enough of it. So I took those three columns out, but we do have some data. If you look at the one, so the first column, should we start this up? Let me catch up with the chat. What's your view on the stocks rally losing out due to the growth? It's not the mainly the coronavirus. There's other effects uh, related to the stock market. The coronavirus is the trigger, is the excuse. Airlines, at least in Europe, and uh, yeah, for sure, it's going to have a major economic effect uh, in Cecil. We talked about this. Like anyone that thought that wasn't going to have a, an economic effect really doesn't, doesn't understand supply chain. When there's factories closing in China, right? That are making products for 
a lot of tech companies and other companies outside of China that's going to have and uh, uh, what do you call it both with suppliers of raw materials and the final product right so for sure the for, full deadness isn't something you can calculate super accurately because we're only a couple of months in yeah yeah and the data again is flawed the market is factoring in the risk of the virus going global and shutting down trade routes uh luca i disagree i don't think it's taken that into full effect yet okay i think this is more the little trigger the excuse for people to liquidate right uh we can talk about the stock market later um but there's a you know a lot of ceos have resigned because they can cash out sell their stock there's a lot of stuff going on sabian f how are you doing f welcome welcome from down south in a hot climate right um and uh f we talked about it me and f had a little conversation a couple of weeks ago we mentioned that the stock market might come down a lot in a matter of days uh, and it did last week we'll see what happens in the week coming up tomorrow starting okay gang should we do a little looking at the data so you're saying the virus is exposing other fundamental risks big time big time what were you saying uh, about raw material suppliers raw material suppliers if you if you're gonna make anything you're gonna make a mouse you're gonna make, make this you're gonna make that you need raw materials the factories wherever they are they need the raw materials coming in and different parts made from other companies that are making the getting the raw materials right so it's just a supply chain things are being cut off right with the new virus we don't know a lot about it uh, my biggest question is regarding the recovered numbers with a new virus we don't know a lot about it how can anyone be classified as fully recovered and people are coming back right oh recovered oops they're not predatory how are you doing no longer testing positive for a virus yeah okay gang I'll keep my eyes on the chat but I'm gonna keep the flow of this going where we see the data see the charts because it's really important when you're looking at data to see the stuff uh, without the break so your mind can process it and put it together Dell FX welcome from Germany salutations from Canada so gang let's take a look at this data and as I mentioned before um, we did two videos before looking at the data initially this video here which was uh asmr math live stream we had and the conversation came up about um, exponential growth so what we ended up doing was taking a look at whatever data we had regarding covid 19 coronavirus of the infection rate and we talked about what exponential growth could look like what a doubling period was right and then when more data was available we did a live stream on twitch where we did exactly what we're about to do we i created a table and put some graphs together and we took a look at those that data set right and it was just for 17 days worth of data so we did a live stream and then i took the segment where we looked at the data and cut that out and sort of highlighted some stuff through my video editor and uploaded that as a separate video on its own right so we have three streams out there regarding covid 19 coronavirus okay and we are live streaming this as well so the chat is going and i'll keep my eyes on the chat make sure we don't get any troll action happening but i'll let people have the conversation and i'm just going to run through the data here for you guys right and what we have here what i compiled together if you've watched the previous videos or if you plan on watching it you'll notice that i add a few more columns in here there's three other columns that i wanted to add but because the data is sparse it's not reliable um, and we don't have enough of it i decided not to include that that data and those three columns were related to information that i was trying to get uh regarding the virus what we have outside of china right because we can't really rely on the data coming out of china anymore right so what we have here we got the date 
So we're going, the data that I've compiled here is going from January 20th to February 29th. Okay, so we're looking at 41 days worth of data, which starting to give us uh, a nice feel of what might be happening, right? The data, the noise is starting to disappear and we're sort of, we're getting the trends. We had the trends before, but we can rely more on the data because there is, there is more of it, right? The next column, the third column is the total confirmed worldwide, okay? The fourth column is confirmed in mainland China, and we'll talk about this. And as soon as we look at the percent growth per day, you'll get a feel for why this data is most likely not accurate, right? Because if you look down, so we have mainland China, and then we have data for uh, the number of infected uh, confirmed outside of China, including Hong Kong, right? So that's the fifth column. And again, I should have put the numbers up top, but there's only so much room I could play with here, right? So we have other, including Hong Kong, and that column is the radio infections outside of China, okay? And to get a feel for how that data is playing out, what I created was three more columns, right? So the first three columns of data is the number of confirmed cases the next three columns is the percent growth per day for each of the columns okay and in the background if you can hear the our neighbors are playing their musicians they recently moved in and they're playing mandolin <laughs> the link the link the link right so we're getting that at times uh, it's sort of soothing to a certain degree so i hope you guys enjoy it if you can hear it so one, two, three, four, five, the sixth column is the percent growth per day for the total number of confirmed, right? And if you start off from January 21st, 21st, and if you go all the way to February 13th, 14th, you'll notice that it was, you know, we started off, it was fairly noisy. Things were jumping all over the place. And then it was stabilizing around 20% into the teens. And then on February 13th, it kicked up to 33%, right? The number of confirmed cases. That's because China changed their uh, method of confirming cases and whatnot, right? So they changed their criteria and the way they were presenting the data and taking in the data right and then after that what you see is the china the infection rate in china just dropping down to basically one percent per day this area is very important to look at right because most of the cases are out of china that's really affecting the total confirmed cases outside of china Okay, and when we look at the graphs, you will get a feel for it, right? I just want to run you through the table right now. The reason that we know these numbers are most likely flawed or not accurate is because the percent increase, okay, per day outside of China is huge. Percent confirmed outside of China starting as of basically when china changed the way they were reporting the numbers collecting the data right went into the teens 11 percent, 15 14 15 12 10 9 17 and now we're going into the 20s the high 20s and into the 30 percent we even actually hit 30 percent increase in the number of confirmed cases outside of china in a day right that's huge keep your eyes on that this is telling us that basically unless unless in china the virus has burnt itself out and the number of infected is completely collapsed that could be either because china is doing a great job of containing people and they're treating everyone which most people agree that's not the case it could be because the virus has mutated and it's not as severe anymore and it's actually inoculating inoculating people i don't know the correct terminology i'm not a biologist i'm a geophysicist right i just like the data so maybe the virus has mutated so it's not infecting anymore the r naught value is completely dropped or 
the most likely case, the data coming out of China is not accurate, right? We'll find out soon enough. The next column, after the 3% growth, total China and outside of China, we have the total number of confirmed deaths, okay? And then we have the total number of recovered. The next three columns are the fatality rate, right? And one thing that we're seeing right now, if you look at this column, the fatality rate, basically percent of people that are dying, people were quoting 2%, right? And it's sitting at for, from January 31st all the way to basically, again, February, where China changed the way they were reporting numbers, mid-February, it was sitting around 2 2.5%, right? But because China's numbers are most likely not accurate, the number of infected is not rising the way it should because of exponential growth. And because the number of death outside of China is growing, we're seeing the mortality rate kick up to 3.5% now. Okay, relative to the total number of confirmed if we're going by the official numbers. So again, this mortality rate might be real if we believe that the number affected are uh, that are being reported are accurate, or the mortality rate is kicking up because there's people dying outside of China, but we're not seeing the number infected rise because the data coming out of China is not accurate. So that's kicking up the percent, the mortality rate, right? You can take it either way, okay? And the last two columns is the percent total recovered, which is from the confirmed cases, how many, per, what percent have recovered, which we're sitting at around 40, early 40 percent, okay? So that's the tab table. I just wanted to run you through that and what we're seeing in the last column. And when we see the graphs, you'll get a feel for how these look, the visual of it, right? And the last column is death versus recovered as a percentage. So initially, the number of recovered wasn't very many because people it was taking people a month to recover from this thing, right? And people were dying. So there was actually more deaths than recovered. But this last column is showing positive signs because what we're seeing is the number of recovered is increasing and so the number of relative death to recovered is decreasing right which is which is a good thing which is a good thing okay now i know there's a conversation going on i don't i wasn't keeping my eyes on the chat spider-man how are you doing um I'll come back to the chat after we go through the charts because I do want to have this segment. Uh, have the segment, a great, a really great table. <laughs> Thanks, Zarya. There's three more columns I wanted to add, but couldn't do it, right? Um, but what I want to do is make sure we're able to cut this little segment out of the live stream and upload it independently, right? So let's take a look at the graphs, okay? So the first graph we're going to look at is the. the total confirmed cases right so this is the graph of the total confirmed cases okay and i'm titling this these graphs basically analyzing the coronavirus covid 19 data from january 20th to february 29th okay 2020 and that basically encompasses 41 days worth of data right now if you take a look at this on february um 13th 14th which is basically day if we bring out the table again let me bring out the table again so we go we'll go by the second column the x axis is our second column it's the number of days that we're looking at the data right and if you look at day 25 that's when china changed the way they were reporting the numbers and collecting the data right so on day 25 the day before there were one percent growth per day which Everybody agreed that couldn't have been the case, right? And then on day 25 is 33%. That's what we're seeing here with the big kick up. Because a lot of a lot of new cases were confirmed, right? The jump was, I believe, like 15,000 new cases. We can take a look at the table to figure out what the, what the number was. If you look at 25, it went from 45,000 
confirmed cases for total to 60,000 or basically 45,000 to 60,000 inside China. So 15,000 new cases were added. That's why we're seeing we're seeing this big jump happening at day 25, right? Now, if you look at this graph, initially you see the it's fairly flat at the first few days and then it's starting to go exponential exponential and then we see the the graph sort of taper off start flattening out that's most likely because the the data was not being collected in a accurate way coming out of china because it was mainly chinese infections that were running the data right and then all of a sudden we get fifteen thousand new cases and if you continue to look at the data it looks flat looks flat looks flat and towards the end in the 39 40 and 41 we're starting to see a pickup again right we're starting to see that pick up again keep that in mind okay here's the number of confirmed uh, inside China so this is total confirmed right this is the number of confirmed in mainland China right again we see the same thing going exponential flattens out and then 15,000 pop up right and then starts going up and it's flattening out right flat so this is linear towards the end in day 40 41 and I'm gonna bring up the total again you're seeing a little kick up for the total confirmed in day 40 41 right here's why we're seeing the kick up because the total confirmed includes the number of cases outside of China right so total confirmed mainland China outside of China we're going full-on exponential with the number of confirmed cases outside of China and this going exponential in the last three four days of the number of confirmed cases outside of China is giving the kick that we're seeing in the total confirmed cases okay that that's the kick that we're seeing up there okay now if this thing's growing at the rate that we're, we're seeing in the table outside of China, which is basically anywhere between 20 to 30 percent per day, that's been the case for the last week or so. If we bring up the table, let me bring up the table here. If you bring up the table and if you look at which column, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you look at the eighth column, which is percent growth per day, other meaning outside of China in the last from day 33 to day 41 right from basically February 21st 22nd to February 29th right growth per day outside of China is anywhere between 17 to 30 percent per day that's a lot that's a lot and that's what we're seeing here serious kick up okay this is the main reason i mentioned a few times that most likely the data coming out of china is not accurate i don't think any scientist anyone looking at the data would say other than they found a cure they got they got they got some kind of vaccine that they're giving millions of tens of millions of people uh, or the virus is mutated and it's not infecting anyone and everyone miraculously is getting better right well not getting better because the number of recovered is still following a normal trend right it's still going exponential growth right but there isn't huge pop-ups right so keep this in mind the best data right now that we can start analyzing is the number numbers coming out of from out of countries outside of China okay the next table or next graph we're gonna look at is the growth per day total okay so the growth per day globally because it's influenced heavily with China has dropped down to one or two percent per day right if we look at the table again let me bring up the table so this is the 
one, two, three, four, five, the sixth column. So we're about to look at the sixth, seventh, and eighth columns, right? And if you look at the sixth and seventh column from basically February 15th, day 27, to February 29th, day 41, we're sitting anywhere from three to zero, three to zero percent growth in China per day, which isn't very much, very accurate. However, towards the end, we're seeing a little kick up again in the total percent growth per day because outside of China is growing 20, 25 percent per day, right? So all of a sudden, the growth per day for the total number of confirmed is going kicked up to 3% on day 41, right? Which is what we're seeing here towards the end, right? So this is the growth per day based on the official numbers globally, right? Here's the growth per day in China. Even in China, we're seeing a little kick up, right? And here's the growth per day, okay, outside of China and it's kicking up right initially you know there's a lot of noise we had 50 30 kicking up to 80 percent per day so it did the noise flatten out now we're seeing the infections kick up and this trend doesn't look good okay if you take the data from day 25 right and day 25 based on our table and i'm going to provide these tables and graphs in our on our patreon page and our and on our um subscribe star page and i'll post these tables and graphs on our discord and i'm only allowed to do it uh for for twitter and some of the other sharing platforms so i might load these up um, actually i'll just load them up on patreon that way i can just load up the stuff on one location right but if you look at the table here okay from day 25 is when china changed the way they were presenting the data collecting the data right confirming the data if you cut out the data above that right take out the initial three four weeks of data collection that we've had right and start looking at the data from day 25 24 if you do a just a regression analysis on this this thing's going like this. So the infection rate hopefully stabilizes around 20% and starts coming down. But the odds are the the growth per day outside of China is going to, from the trend line, if you do a just an analysis on it, it might even go higher than 20 to 30% per day for a next little while, possibly. Hopefully it flattens out and drops, but all indications are that it won't. Okay, um, all indications are that the numbers are actually being downplayed. Okay, I thought this graph was important as well. So right now the two main columns and the two main graphs that are showing us a more reasonable, more accurate something that we can rely on better than what the numbers are out of coming out of china have been this graph as well as the oop, not that one this one right the number of uh, confirmed cases outside of china and the percent growth outside of china both of these graphs indicate that we're just at the beginning stages of this thing the numbers increasing outside of china exponentially as we're seeing here right especially if the growth rate is also increasing per day this is per day by the way 20 percent increase per day 30 percent more reported per day 17 percent more reported per day you do a little interest rate takes an interest rate equation that you everybody uses in economics trying to figure out how much money they're going to owe in a year if they pay a certain percent if you run those numbers with a 20 percent per day exponential growth wow 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 right now these are the percent gross per day right here is the 
total deaths, the absolute numbers, what we have right now, global, right? Now, one thing I wanted to do in the table I also wanted to include was the number of deaths outside of China, but the data is not accurate, right? I created three tables to be able to crunch those numbers as well. And I looked at them, I checked all my sources and things were reporting different, some were missing it. And I was like, okay, I can't include this data. Maybe we'll include the data in next month's uh, update of COVID-19 data that most likely we're gonna analyze. Most likely we're gonna revisit this once a month, okay? And just continuously grow this data and link it up with the work we're doing in ASMR mathematics and you know what we're going to create in regards to statistics right a module on statistics and by the way I'm not trying to you know treat this as only a mathematical concept right there's a lot of people being hurt right now but the data is the data when you're doing science you really have to approach this stuff just analyzing the data putting personal feelings aside right which is one of the powers of mathematics because that gives you a clearer picture of what's going on you're not in panic mode you're not going by rumors you're not you're not you're not freaking out and believing every little hype coming in you're looking at the data and analyzing that data and trying to get a picture of what's going on you're not relying on secondary sources to provide you that information right so right now what we're seeing with the total number of deaths with this graph was that it was going exponential and then flattened out, right? Again, keep in mind, this is total number of deaths. We don't know what the numbers really are coming out of China. Okay. This other graph is a total number confirmed recovered, right? Confirmed cases that have recovered, which is fantastic. This is growing exponentially. It's looking a little linear, but again, the numbers that we're getting are not 100% accurate coming out of mainland China and possibly some other countries as well. I don't think the numbers coming out of India are accurate. There's absolutely no way, right? Three confirmed cases for the last two weeks in India, while Canada has gone from four to 20, United States has gone from like three or four to, I forget what it was now. I looked at it before it was, into i think it's broke a hundred right there was one nursing home i believe that old age home that's everybody's infected like they're quarantining the whole region right the whole complex so um take this with a grain of salt as well right the number of recovered is going to remember there's a delay factor as well it takes people a long time to recover so if the number of infected is growing exponentially right and it is outside of china the confirmed cases anyway then this number will most likely might have a little lag with it but it should go exponential if the fatality rate is accurate as they say which is two percent we're getting around three and a half percent right now and i'll show you the graph on that right so this is the total confirmed recovered cases okay this is the fatality rate right now it was sitting around two percent it was bouncing off two percent and then what you're seeing here again on day 24 25 is when china changed the way their methodology of reporting the numbers collecting the numbers testing people right that's why we see the click down right the mortality the fatality rate was kicking up and then all of a sudden number of infected kicked up right 15,000 so the number of deaths didn't kick up on that level so all of a sudden we see a little drop at the 24 day mark where it drops back down to around two and a half percent and then slowly what we're seeing is kicking up to around three and a half percent right um, take this with a grain of salt if the number of infected is more then the fatality rate is going to drop which is a good thing right the number of infected being more is not good thing but the fatality rate dropping is a good thing right so 
it, it, it's here and there, both positive and negative effects here. If the fatality rate is kicking up to 3.5%, there, we're getting to more problematic areas. Not that 2% is not problematic, right? This is the percent recovered from the number of confirmed, right? We're sitting above 40% now, right? 45% of people who were tested and confirmed to have COVID-19 have recovered, which is fantastic. And again, you see discrepancy in the data, flaw in the data, because on day 23, 24, 25, 24 to 25, because the number of confirmed cases kicked up by 15,000 in mainland China, the percent recovered dropped, which shouldn't really be case be the case if we're uh, if the data is not flawed, if something hasn't changed in the methodology, which we know it has. China came out and confirmed it, right? So if you're doing a scientific analysis on this, you have to sort of smooth this out. Okay, run filters through this thing. So percent recovered is not bad, 40 plus percent, right? And this graph here is the number of deaths versus recovered, and the number of deaths was a lot higher. It was 140 percent higher than the percent recovered, number recovered initially. If we look at this table, go back to our table, this is the last column that we're talking about. So the death toll was 259 on January 31st, and the number recovered was 187 right from the confirmed cases so the number of dead was a lot higher than the number of recovered which was frightening to some people but we needed more data right and when you start looking at the data the number of recovered obviously is going to be more than the number of fatalities right if the more fatality rate is only sitting at two to three percent so slowly what we're seeing is the ratio of death versus recovered is decreasing which is a great sign right which is a good sign okay now this is all the graphs that i had i just wanted to run through that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the table back up so everyone can see the data okay and again consider this the third sort of official video that we're doing regarding COVID 19. the first one was uh, this one we had here where um, it sort of came up during a math live stream um, where you know a conversation came up regarding exponential growth so we took like seven days worth of data and extrapolated to the doubling period to see what the growth was and we did a follow-up live stream in a week or two weeks where we had 17 days worth of data and we did exactly then what we just did now is looked at the tables looked at the graphs and try to figure out what was going on okay let me kick these down and put up the table i'm going to go back to the chat and we're going to talk about the talk about the data talk about what people think okay and um, if i do end up cutting this little segment now where we looked at the data uh, with the graphs um, you can follow the conversation in the next video which will be loaded up which is the full-on live stream okay aside from that uh, hello chat how are you doing how how has the conversation been if there is uh, anything you're seeing in the data which you think uh, should be uh, you know any discrepancies or any other columns that you guys think we should be adding to this table to do further analysis either comment here or preferably post the stuff in our science folder in the heavy subjects uh, so maybe we can just add more columns and put some more graphs together to see what things look like for our next month's update of the data okay They already have when C first started they tried to cover it up yeah Zara and that was very problematic for two months China was trying to cover it up if they had tackled it head-on in that initial first two months we probably would not have 
not be seeing this thing growing in such a huge way globally tank how are you doing do we know two things if the virus has ran its course in china or is still gathering speed and what percent of the whole population has been infected uh tank i don't think the virus has run its course right because if the virus came out in china right and if it's mutated and run its course inside China, then it should have already, the mutated version should have already come out of China and be running its course. But we're seeing exponential growth outside of China, or outside of China, right? So I don't think uh, it's run its course inside China. As for the whole population, well, population of China is 1.2 to 1.5 billion, right? And the number of confirmed you got to add a multiplier to the number of confirmed coming out of china it even if you add a multiplier to it it's still a very small percentage of the number in fact number confirmed anyway my personal guess okay if we're going to throw because if if you're running anything let's assume you're you're running a corporation you're running a business you're running a government you have to assume the data is flawed okay and you have to assume prepare for the possibility of the worst case scenario and the worst case scenario china i would say at least an order of magnitude higher okay so take that with a grain of salt of course that's just my my worst case scenario maybe even more okay think it's in the table yeah if there's anything positive to take from COVID-19 outbreak it hopefully will make a lot of governments reevaluate the disease control procedures yeah and coolio one of the things that's come up is remember the United States has a lot of pharmaceutical companies right and the United States has put severe sanctions on a lot of different countries right those severe sanctions are uh, problematic for those countries regarding healthcare because they can't get their hands on a lot of things they need right so this virus has hit Iran which is under severe sanctions if it hits Venezuela which is under severe sanctions right and they don't have the medical mater materials right masks sanitizers gloves tylenol right oxygen right antibiotics right all these things i don't know actually antibiotics is not working with this from where i understand but oxygen if but if people get pneumonia they need the they need the drug if they can't get that and they can't contain the virus viruses don't understand borders right really viruses what borders right so if something breaks out in a country which is under severe economic pressure and they can't contain the situation that is going to expand to neighboring countries and those neighboring countries so forth and so forth right so this whole thing punishing people just out of political spite is not good for humanity we need open trade right apologies i'll check back later i'm only on a, my phone so can't read the table yeah i'm sorry tink i try to f make the table in the way where we could present the data a little bit bigger but there's a lot of data to be had i have to figure out how we're going to end up presenting the data um for next month because we're going to have 30 days more data we might actually start filtering and taking out doing an average over the last five days right so this is by the way uh, for someone who loves data i don't like what's happening but this is a data set if you approach it with non-emotional perspective and a data set you can do a lot with so we'll figure out how we're going to approach it for next month's update okay what do you mean when you say it's mutated it can mutate right like uh from what i understand sars mutated itself into a more benign form right inoculating people that were 
infected or hadn't been infected before so less people were getting the symptoms right i would like to see the iran data the iran data i don't think that's accurate either m e Ikrobus, ikrobus. <laughs> microbus microbus how are you doing when a virus mutates it can get better or worse and yeah it could get worse too as well by the way yeah i'm looking at more of the positive but it could go a lot worse right because it affects how the virus replicates itself it could respond differently to medicine which governments have spent months developing because it has evolved by then yeah hi all Osaka Matt I'm curious if the case of the plague black death in China back in November has any relations I didn't hear about the black death in China how fitting if the next plague comes around kills the world because of bureaucracy in the medical field coolio the infection rate is spreading because of bureaucracy right it's because of global travel for sure but because there's shortages of supplies in certain countries right not good ridiculous really i saw a story i saw a story about how the north korea is dealing with the virus they're just straightened up killing any yeah i i haven't seen the story i don't know what is the recovered total column represent uh the total number of recovered relative to the total number confirmed right so keep in mind the total number recovered is lagged so as soon as they confirm someone people could be out anywhere from two to four to six weeks right so there's a lag in the total con confirmed relative to total recovered okay can we just impose tariffs on the virus <laughs> yeah i wish they followed economic political biases right effective but horrific percent of infected that have recovered chicho do we have access to demographics i i didn't look at the demographics sorry not yet right there's a lot of data to process right and because the data is not accurate some people are reporting this number some people are returning this number and there's a lag in the data from one website to another website there was a couple of places where i had to go in there and when i graphed the data i was seeing clicks or it was going negative based on the percentages so i had to go into the data and figure out which one was giving in the negative and then go to another website and confirm the numbers so putting this table together took me a little bit of time to do uh, i'm limited on time right the demographics i haven't looked at yet no one's really providing great data like everyone's taking a little bit of here a little, and they're presenting the main general ones and the who data the way they're presenting it is man could you make anything more difficult right and less transparent like they're not i, I don't want to dig into it too much because i haven't gone past the initial oh man why is it like this that's ridiculous right so i would love to see a table like this open source where the age group categories are in columns and the percent relative to the fatality rate for the different age groups taking place right i would love to see that right can you explain who is benefiting from this epidemic uh you were talking about stock markets corporations ceos um i, I wouldn't say benefiting there are corporations that are going to benefit from this there's no doubt right pharmaceutical industry is going to benefit from this anyone that comes out with a vi with a vaccine is going to benefit from this the companies that are selling masks are going to benefit from this toilet paper companies are going to benefit from this sanitizer companies are going to benefit from this because they're going to be selling more of their product they're going to go into full-blown production mode right as long as the supply chain is available for them to get the product to market they're going to benefit they're going to see a huge kick up in revenue right and then when if when this thing plays out and goes down then you're going to see a drop in their revenue because everybody's got stocked up on <laughs> five bottles of sanitizers in their house which is not the best thing to do right only 40 percent have recovered but only seven percent have died 
what about the other 51%? There, there's a lag in recovery. This virus is taking people out for a number of weeks, right? And this virus is not like the flu where, okay, it takes you off for a while and you come back and you're all fine and dandy. From what I understand, this virus is hitting internal organs, right? So there's going to be some long-term, for some people, long-term health effects if they end up being sick for four six eight weeks right so the other 51 percent they haven't recovered yet but the data can't possibly be correct uh considering the virus broke out in wuhan a city with 11 million population and then the spread within china before it was discovered how relevant is the data accurate ac accurately today coming out of china not very i'm not from February, if we take a look at this, right? See that blip on uh, February 13th when they reported 33 numbers and then the numbers drop, percent growth per day just drops almost to zero in China. Well, that tells us that that data is not accurate, especially if you look at the next column over where you're seeing the percent growth per day outside of China is 17 to 30% per day, right? So something's wrong here. Something seriously is wrong here. If we're just imagine if we're getting 20 20% 20 growth per day inside China, what the number of infected confirmed cases should really be. And keep in mind, this is just the number of confirmed cases. This isn't the number infected, right? But that said, it is important for us to look at the data and do a comparison which is why we did this right if you compare the graph take a look at this if you compare the graph now i gotta i wish i labeled them more accurately oops hold on let me i'm gonna kill the table i'm gonna bring up i believe it's this one this is the percent growth per day total right the next one is percent growth per day in China, which is basically sitting at 0%. And then you look at the percent growth per day outside of China, which is 20 to 30% growth per day outside of China. Well, that tells you something, really. And then you relate this to this graph. This is the exponential growth of the number infected per day outside China. These two graphs reveal a lot about what's going on with the virus so it's still very important to analyze whatever data you get your hands on right very very important this these, these two tables are extremely important or these two graphs are extremely important so in any data set keep this in mind as well in any data set when you're compiling data and doing some calculations you have multiple columns that you're going to look at data the worst thing you can do is just focus on one column and say this column is it which is what a lot of corporate propagandist mainstream media does right they present you one data right oh this this they don't dig down you have to dig down and look at specifics right and once you start looking at different columns different data sets you can pull out some of the ones that you can follow a mathematical model follow a trend line that doesn't have breaks in the data discrepancy in the data so the ones that flow right you get a feel for it once you start analyzing the stuff then you start getting a more accurate picture of what's going on in the world that's why mathematics is ridiculously important right very very important uh okay chicho explain it better morning chicho bird how are you doing How's life? I'm just curious. Why do you think Indon Indonesia has been largely exempt from the corona? I, I don't know. I don't know. Are they even reporting it? I don't know. His recovery number is only as of that date. Yeah. You should add in influence A and influence B numbers over the same period range. Uh, what do you mean influence uh, collective what do you mean influence a and influence b oh influenza <laughs> i should read your next go influenza a influenza b uh, i would have to have access get get those numbers right really it took me a fair bit of time to go to put this table together okay like for me i i like analyzing data 
so it was pretty important for me to get as accurate data as possible and if you see any flaws in this table please let me know i will post these pictures up today in in our patreon page and uh, most like a patreon and subscribe star all of them and i'll announce it on uh, gab mines lo kv and twitter as well linking people up to the patreon page most likely right and i'll post these on our discord page as well should i stockpile food no not stockpile food but get some of the essentials make sure you have some supplies right stockpiling to me means getting a warehouse and no right but have rice have beans have peanut butter have toilet paper you should be getting yourself a bottle of tylenol right or something similar that reduces fever right because if if this thing becomes a yearly event right and it has the possibility of becoming a yearly event right let's assume the numbers kick up die down right and then next year they come up again right it could be just like the normal flu this is just a new normal right but one thing that happens with this fever kicks up you need to control fever right so if fever is kicking up there's multiple ways to control fever you can put ice rags cold rags on your forehead on your feet on your extremities cool yourself down another way you can do it is uh, a great remedy that has been used for millennia for human beings right take vinegar and water right for centuries really this is old school remedy we used to we still do it in our family take vinegar and water and put vinegar in water and with a rag right cold water preferably rag you wipe down a person's arms neck back of the neck forehead and their feet and that cools them down right so aside from that tylenol or other things that bring down fever are a good idea to have a bottle in your house right so you should have tylenol you should have toilet paper get yourself some vitamin c if you live in an area that you need to go out on a daily or weekly basis to get water get some extra water right do some prep no harm in it and these are non-perishables so you're not you're not buying food in your fridge that's going to spoil in a week you're buying stuff that you're going to use over the next little while demographics will be very important as to who is succumbing and who is recovering age range and um yeah the age the elderly are being hit hard right and the mortality fatality rate is highest in the elderly where is your location germany m3 is making serious bank from this yeah m3 yeah there's going to be companies that are going to make good money off this right Oof, there's a lot of chat here gang i'm going to scroll down a little bit um if there's anything that was directed towards me please let me know or towards the table or the data right i still don't understand how it has to do with the stock market crash uh sleepy waves if for example there's companies that let's assume you're a company that makes 10,000 units in china and that's what you sell that's how you make money the chinese factory closes down you can't make your 10,000 units you can't sell anything your revenue your quarterly revenue drops right you're not bringing any money in your numbers are going to look horrendous your stock plummets right just imagine as an individual let's assume as a person you were making products in china and selling them yourself right you can't get those products you can't sell those the uh, that inventory that you do not have you can't pay your rent you're out in the streets right that is that's that's why it's extremely important to decentralize our lives right it is extremely important to have local supply of food right there's a lot of places in the world right now that don't have access to local food everything is shipped in everything right the farming industry is decimated where they were supposed to grow food they've built high rises destroyed the topsoil very very important this is one of the best reasons 
uh, defenses uh, of decentralization, right? It's called security. <laughs> okay, my dude, I'm actually so seriously interested in this information. Dalton Beck, how are you doing? I'm right now because I drank or Corona. <laughs> Well, I hope you're enjoying yourself, brother. Back. Yeah, personally, I don't have a mask. A mask is... Have you compared the epidemic curves of SARS and COVID-19? Yeah, I've looked at it, uh, collective. SARS uh, wasn't growing as fast as COVID-19. Not on this scale, right? And COVID-19, um, it's our not value, I believe, was less okay fatality rate was less uh sars i wasn't too worried about if people uh, if you watch the first time the discussion of uh, covid 19 coronavirus came out i mentioned that this is different than sars because i looked at sars back then uh and i realized it wasn't a big deal right just i looked at some of the numbers like 20 years ago when it came out I'm, I, i've done this for a while just looking at numbers right i like this right because it allows me to understand how things are going to fold out economically politically right it's just self-preservation we have to know this stuff as citizens of the world right so i looked at sars way back then and i realized it wasn't a as big of a deal as media was making it out to be COVID 19 i looked at the numbers i went okay this needs further analysis right that's why i've been compiling this data since Basically, when we first did uh, did our first math with this video, right? It just came up using it as exponential growth because I was looking at the numbers, right? Someone said, oh, what is it? I think the conversation was, oh, what is exponential growth? It was rate of interest. So I went, well, I knew the numbers for the first 10, seven days or something like this. So I just said, oh, this is what exponential growth could be, right? And I followed the numbers and we did a follow-up with the next live stream or the previous live stream we did to this regarding COVID-19, right? Um, this is different than SARS. I'm gonna scroll down, guys. Busy Freeman, have you heard of uh, the difference between Asian and uh, uh, Caucasian lungs and that the virus may be worse for Asia? I've heard that the virus might be hitting a certain ethnicity harsh, harder than other ethnicities. Um, we'll find out based on the data right if we look at the numbers where is the table here let me bring up the uh if you look at this well it looks like the number of cases outside of china are growing exponentially now the question is based on this graph right this is outside of china so ideally we would have to take this and break it out into different regions in the world so for example just imagine if we took this graph and split that up into the number of cases in asia the number of cases in africa the number of cases in south america the number of cases in europe the number of cases in north america right and europe eastern europe and middle east so splinter this off because that's one thing you can do with the data as long as you have it right i don't have access to that data right if i did that's exactly what i would be doing and i can guarantee you there are people inside who and other centralized institutions and specifically country related people i'm pretty sure the chinese government is looking into this data i'm pretty sure everybody in the higher up in the centralized powers are looking into this data the more odds are they're just not making it available to us or easily available to us right all of this data should be open source for the whole world to look at right in raw format so we can run our own analysis on it but if you break this off and you see the same trend in every country then the virus is not hitting different ethnicities differently right if you see this graph for asian countries and you you see linear for european countries then you could analyze that stuff accordingly right interpret that hypothesize that it might be affecting a certain ethnicity 
harsher than others, right? It's interesting though. Let me pop up the table back up again. Okay, I've scrolled all the way down, gang. I've scrolled all the way down. That way um, I can stay up with the chat. There was a lot that I missed. I feel like who really dropped the ball on this waiting uh, to declare the pandemic. Have you guys heard about the bonds, the derivatives that were people five hundred million dollars were invested in, betting that a pandemic was not going to break out, so they could get anywhere between seven to eleven percent interest on their investments, and if there was a pandemic breaking out, if WHO World Health Organization came out and announced the pandemic, then the bonds wouldn't be paid out, neither the interest or the original bonds. So there's a Wall Street in game in the play here as well, right? They're making derivatives out of pandemics, right? With the World Bank. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right? So there might be a reason why WHO didn't announce a pandemic because of the bond market crazy right crazy right did they declare pandemic yet i don't think so i don't think they've declared it yet i think if they declare it by march all those bondholders are screwed they don't get their seven percent eleven percent or their original money so what is your summary and prediction based on this data sleepy waves okay let me scroll down again uh can you please link us to the uh, read more about the bond market okay the bond market oh man uh, I'll link it out I linked it on discord sleepy waves uh, if you go to our discord page I've linked it up in discord page okay that bond thing was crazy really that bond thing was crazy oh really where at I'm in or Maria I guess not should I have a gun just in in case it gets too bad uh, if I was in the United States, I would be armed, right? Not because of the of this, but in general, if I have the right to bear arms, I will bear arms, and so I don't know. It's up to you. It depends where you live and how comfortable you feel, right? But not because of this. This isn't a zombie apocalypse, okay? Seriously, this isn't a zombie apocalypse. This is a virus that's out loose in the world it's economic turmoil health political possibly possibly related to economic wars going on right why do so many people in power value money over lives it's disgusting coolio i agree with you is this a conspiracy channel slayer i looking at data this is a mathematics channel <laughs> right we look at data a lot and a comic book channel and a food channel right and a gaming channel well i haven't played any games but i have a gaming collection i gotta show you guys far from it furthest thing from it i heard a conspiracy theory the chinese bio lab in the oh that's uh market and could the test animals to me uh, uh busy freeman the kicker is uh the if you go if you look at the hypotheses that it came out came out of the lab in china that was eight miles or 15 miles away and stuff like this you have to also include all the other conspiracies all the other theories i don't want to say conspiracies because people give conspiracy a bad name conspiracy is not a bad name but call, let's call it theories as to how this virus came to be right some people say oh it's a bioweapon no some people say no it's not a bioweapon because the kill ratio is not high well if you consider the kill ratio maybe it's not a bioweapon to it's not a bioweapon used on the front lines of uh what do you call it just uh military warfare maybe it's a bioweapon that's only supposed to take people out of the game in terms of economics right so you wouldn't make the fatality rate too high you just make it the sickness lasts a long time so you collapse different countries based on um, if you're waging economic warfare if 
if it's a bioweapon, maybe it was a bioweapon created in the Western world in the United States and Canada, and China was trying to get a hold of it so they could create a vaccine to protect themselves. So there's so many different theories, right? There's so many different theories. Once you go down that rabbit hole, you have to make sure you also uh, think about the other theories as well, right? You can't attach yourself to one theory. The only thing you can attach yourself to is the data, right? what we're seeing right now this is the best way to go about this okay i'll check it out on discord it's in the science folder i believe and i also believe posted in the economics folder sleepy waves if you can't find it let me know i'll dig it up for you there's a couple of articles actually for the bond market there has to be uh 20 000 infected and so many dead before the bond kicks in and people lose their money yeah and i believe that's by march we're January, February, January, February, March, end of March. Uh, we're there, right? Or middle of March. I forget what the date was. Uh, the Discord should be valid. If you do this, check this out. Discord. That link should take you there. Okay, I'm going to scroll down again. Because there's a lot of chat going on. So again, if there's anything directed towards me, please let me know. I'll read it up. Okay. Any thoughts on the docs being arrested for whistleblowing China as bad? Yeah, that was crazy, right? And one of the ones uh, already passed away. A financial advisor in the news said gold is still safe, but I personally wouldn't put my money in gold right now. Gold took a, took a major tumble with, with the stock market. Uh, at the beginning of this week right i believe gold dropped like 50 dollars it went from 1640 down to like 1580 or something i haven't i haven't looked at it for the last three or four days and you can't eat gold right you can't you can't you know if you have a fever you can't put gold on your forehead right? can weather conditions be added to at the to analyze where easier harder to spread for example not spread so fast in hot climates that would be amazing that would be amazing dada bakula dada that would be fantastic i'd love to see that data as well right if only i had unlimited time and resources right i go ballistic on this we have always had guns it's the second amendment it's in our dna yeah what's the most stable currency right now i would stay still the u.s dollar okay i'm talking about the entire world not just the u.s Ch -ch -ch. i used to be very anti-gun but as i grew up and experienced things where the police most certainly did not have my back or help me when i'm needed it I have started to change my mind. It's a very nuanced issue, in my opinion. A uh, bird, I agree with you. I went through a period where I was anti-gun, no longer. P people say they need gun control, right? They really don't mean gun control. They just mean they want to put guns in the hands, hands of centralized institutions. That, to me, is not a good thing. Okay. Swiss francs. The Cayman Island dollar, according to Google. Really? Swiss franc is about liquidity. There was a period in 2008 where the Swiss franc went through the roof. People are like, it fear drove people to the Swiss franc. Swiss franc was, and then it collapsed, right? Relative to where it was, that is. Is the dollar more stable than gold? Uh, more stable um, i don't know what that means uh, more stable for how long of a period fiat currencies over 100 years no the dollar no right you have to invest gold will go up the fiat currency will go down however you also have to think about liquidity if you're going to take all your disposable income buy gold that's a foolish thing to do you need disposable income for emergency cases to buy food to buy whatever you want to buy to take care of family so it's got to be partitioned all sectors are going down even crypto even crypto right hey i just tuned in this virus really really scares me is this the end of the world no will travel end and i won't see my family for a long while travel may become more difficult 
and you have to really think about why do you why do you need to travel and if you want to see your family you could always live stream with them right or talk live with them right i know hugs are much different and eating dinner with them is much different but sometimes you need to make sacrifices you like a very relaxed man thanks dark passenger agreed gun control equals government has guns and you don't do you trust the government to do anything right no. centralized institutions no time to learn how to barter time to learn how to barter very important time to grow food spring is coming grow food this is hopefully we see a major boom in companies that are providing seeds but except for monsanto and bear providing organic seeds or just seeds or uh, organic farms and local farms and we see a huge boom in local food production right in industries that are focused on local food production that would be amazing this ain't the end of the world homie no you can't travel to north italy at the moment from my country at least yeah i figured the crypto would go up because it is decentralized never underestimate humanity's ability to panic uh coolio it's not about crypto being decentralized or not a lot of crypto is in the hands of a very few people it's still very centralized in terms of control right even though the form of uh trade exchanging transferring money from one location is decentralized the second thing is if things turn the way they are right if they continue in this direction cash is king right a lot of places will not take crypto right individuals might but if you need to go buy toilet paper you can't use your crypto to buy toilet paper right you can sell your crypto to convert to cash to put in a bank take out cash and then go buy your toilet paper but crypto is useless if you need survival you need to pay the rent right it did it first i thought the same but then even bitcoin started dropping shrugs thanks for the mention this is my first ever stream i'm glad i'm, I'm hope i hope i hope you're liking it dark passenger bitcoin is down 1.6 percent today alone 14 percent this week ouch yeah We'll see what happens this this coming week right but according to these numbers this graph right here this graph right here and growth percent growth per day outside of china uh, tells me we got uh, this thing's got legs to grow right welcome to the family spider-man <laughs> nice christ i forgot about toilet paper oh martin get toilet paper <laughs> that's that's one thing i can honestly tell you i went god and by the way don't forget floss and toothpaste okay toilet paper floss toothpaste very important yeah i don't and if you can't get your hands on toilet paper i believe spider-man said a toilet paper was run out in his area just paper towels just cut them in squares like these types of things right like these things right just cut it in squares right here right. and then split it up right. probably don't want to cut them this this small <laughs> but beggars can't be choosers right look at this one those half a sheet look at look at all this right if you can't get your hands on it this is the next best thing okay yeah sleepy ways paper towels are rough on the butt but to be honest beggars can't be choosers if you got to take care of business you got to take care of business you can make toothpaste salt and baking soda martin stay at home stream profit <laughs> yeah i don't have a lot of money in stock but i lost like 50 60 dollars in a week yeah number in fact they're gonna boom the next week i think so outside of china i think we're gonna see that 
column the percent growth per day if it continues at 20 to 30 percent we're going to see the numbers kick into the tens of thousands in the next week to two weeks outside of china just heard word that my local costco sold a three month worth of toilet paper sold out of three month to worth of toilet paper perps is going stale i can i fully expect the virus to go global in fact i was wondering why it took so long yeah i think it's taken so long is because people thought it was just maybe the flu and they weren't checking but the numbers coming out of korea out of china uh, out of uh, iran um, are pretty serious baking soda can it can be a toothpaste substitute cool so get baking soda as well i am making a lot of money i put money in ap they make masks and i played played to go down ual the united airlines the caraval cruises yeah i saw that i was watching the Car uh, caraval uh, cruises stock by the way there will be less flying and going on the circ uh, cruises yeah why hasn't any coronavirus patients been granted internet access is quarantine just sitting in a room with nothing if you if you were hit with this thing and it's hitting you hard would do you have the energy to come on here and do this i got hit with the flu in early january right i barely had the energy to do live streams and do videos and stuff as you call i buy double ply tp tear it in half and wash it out after use to make it go for the oh ten ten no that's serious business i haven't gotten that there yet but thanks for the advice i saw a tv interview with a lady with coronavirus from the cruise ship in japan but she got quarantined before she show showed symptoms and didn't have any insights okay i'm gonna scroll down again gang buy stocks and tp time to take out the paper towels i'm nervous about this virus now dark passenger um being aware is a good thing panicking is not right we got like 15 cases here or so growth is near exponential yeah it is exponential growth outside of china according to the numbers we're getting that's exponential that's serious okay the doubling period on this is just a couple of days so expect i haven't done the calculations for it maybe we do on the next live asmr math live stream right maybe we'll take some of this data and figure out what the doubling period is right by that time we'll have more data as well do you have data for mortality rate of old people versus no i don't slayer it took me long enough to dig this data together man really I was just going at it yesterday duh, 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 and I was I've been compiling the data as every day right I opted I opted this update this table on a daily basis but once I graphed it I realized there's discrepancies in the data it was the graphs were showing backtracks where it shouldn't be right so I had to go to multiple sources to be able to get the data and all of these numbers are approximates okay some of them are numbers reported from here some of them are numbers reported from there so take all of these numbers as approximates okay there's one quarantined uh, person in the state of utah the only thing more people should be worried about is the general public reaction to this virus agreed coolio right if there if there is how panicky people are getting two months in it is a little uh unsettling yeah and wait until the mainstream media starts pushing the panic right don't panic is the recovery percentage included uh serious case recovery no i didn't i i looked at that data but to be able to graph it i needed a daily count right and the daily counts are very difficult to get if you guys know anywhere where you can get all that information on a daily basis instead of just the totals because i wasn't updating those things right and i don't trust the numbers yet right if you know where the tables are post them in our discord page in the science folder mortality rate is going up one of the reasons uh van dugan one of the reasons this mortality rate um fatality rate which is this table here let me take this down let me take this down let me take this down i believe it's this one nope it's this one nope 
uh, this one yeah the reason this is going up the fatality rate is going up right it's because most likely the numbers coming out of China are not accurate right most likely they're not they're reporting zero to one percent per growth per day while outside of China is 20 percent or more per day right so they're not accurate so the num number of confirmed cases is not increasing as it should but the people are dying outside of China so it's kicking up the percentages that's my guess okay that's my guess and that's the table that we're seeing the third last one the fatality rate okay check out this YouTube uh, check check out his YouTube he's got videos on everything from math to comic books to ASMR and a lot of other stuff yeah do fear it was raised what exactly does the virus do uh, it's for the elderly they're getting hit with pneumonia right it's hitting internal organs to a degree so some people are gonna see long-term effects on this one case here in Montreal last I checked I'm not too worried but some of my co-workers are already going mad with fear and anxiety yeah in I, I uh, lonely piggies in Canada I'm in Canada as well there is a little bit of panic in Vancouver right sanitizers are sold out in a lot of places one of my relatives told me that and stuff uh, but Canada is not growing at a rate that is growing in Korea and Iran and stuff like this not yet anyway and we hope it doesn't right so there is no need to panic right I live in the Bay Area and there is a case of person getting the virus by community spread yeah the community spread is actually more than just one case they don't have anything linked up to anyone from China or visiting China or anyone that's seen someone that's visited China so it's community spread people are losing their minds I wonder if I will find my local supermarket empty tomorrow yeah cool thanks yeah there seems to be several US, US cases that have unknown origins yeah do we have details on the traditional Chinese medicine recovery methods I I haven't looked into it does China seem to have uh, to better recovery and management of identified cases compared to other countries I doubt it I doubt it considering how fast it was spreading in China and the measures they took to quarantine like over a hundred million people or a region of a hundred million people right initially quarantine a city of 11 million I don't think um, they're dealing with it from a medical side I think they're dealing with it from a containment side remember the most important thing is to wash your hands before you touch your face yeah I am glad to come here spider-man dark passenger I'm glad you're glad that you came here I heard commentary that it will be worse in Italy because people are more physical than that in in is touching hugging kissing as uh, greetings etc possibly I mean right now we're seeing the cases in Korea skyrocket right but in Korea and in Japan you know there's a lot of not very little I don't know very little but way less shaking hands and touching so it's spreading there uh, but yeah in places where they kiss a lot on the cheeks and stuff possibly I was in store today water was very low Ooh. like for for me we live in a place where water you get from the top you just run through a filter if you live in a place where you can't drink the water from the tap you should get yourself some water why would you why bother just get get a filter some places sleepy waves a filter just doesn't do it the water is really contaminated I have a bread of filter yeah me too I read online this week that uh, there was a confirmed case on a plane from Montreal to Vancouver sorry Chicho oh that's okay lonely piggy Vancouver is Vancouver's got the most amount of cases I believe Vancouver or Toronto in Canada and Vancouver is gonna get hard hit hard harder than what it is right now it's a hub for travel in and out of China in and out of Asia so I expect Vancouver to get hard hit hard right uh, and we I mentioned this during the first the ASMR math stream we did during the first first video that I said 
keep your eyes on Vancouver. I'm pretty sure I said it in this. Keep your eyes on Vancouver, right? And at that time, I don't think Vancouver had any cases. Guys, move to Sweden, nation of introverts. Every every morning in Tokyo, the oops, where to go? Every morning in Tokyo, I gotta, I got to cram up inside trains. Oh yeah, that. Oof. Don't like tap water, even filtered. I have a distiller. That's all of Scandinavia. American water infrastructure is on a third world level. Yeah, Dante, horrendous, horrendous. I'm pretty sure Canada is maybe like five, ten years behind that. Actually, some places is pretty bad in Canada as well. Are you on other platforms, sir? Dark Passenger? Yeah, I'm on BitChute. I don't know if BitChute. Oops, that's caps. Did that BitChute thing come on? Yeah, it did. And I, if you're following me on YouTube, you should follow me on BitChute as well, because YouTube is already uh, throttling us. They're not recommending us. They're we've gotten some red flags on YouTube uh, to a certain degree. Not, you know, I had to dispute them, and then they said, okay, it's this video is okay, right? So they approved it. So uh, I would say you know if you want to follow me all the content is going to be loaded on BitChute. most likely more content is going to be loaded on BitChute than on youtube so if you want to follow everything um you know subscribe to youtube subscribe to BitChute as well uh, that way if anything happens we get kicked off of youtube we'll still be on BitChute. Uh, but in europe the tap water is often better than bottled water in Vancouver too, get a distiller and distill your water from the tap. You'll be uh, surprised, and the gunk you see in the bottom of the distiller. Uh, you can't uh, distiller. Hopefully, that still keeps the water. You don't want to drink pure H two O because that takes minerals out of your system. So you gotta have make sure the water is not working in a way where it's taking minerals out of your system. That'll kill you. Hey Chicho, hello Felix, how are you doing? How's life? The Discord bit shoot. Yeah. And I'm on Minds, Gab, Twitter, Elo, and the VK as well. Okay. And Patreon, of course. I don't know if our we got our thing for Patreon. Patreon. Oop. Do we have patreon popping up and we got our patreon and subscribe star as well okay i'm just going to scroll down again gang if an infected was sandwiched in a 10,000 person event how many attending the event could be infected directly uh, directly um well the are not value for this thing is more than two right some people say two to four could be more right so if the person and they're sweating i don't know here's how youtube works they de demonetize your videos everyone watches your video then they reinstate your monetization after your views have happened they've been they were taking out some of our videos that were we put out like five years i had to dispute them like from years ago right japan is already considering canceling the olympics if this thing grows continues to grow they should cancel the olympics coolio right by the way japan iran uh korea and i believe a couple of other countries have already closed all their schools right six degrees of separation yeah i'm with martin six degrees of separation i've been to shows people are sweating there's a lot of people take their shirts off if they've been hit a lot of people are going to be infected read the bonds article i don't get it so so people who invest in the world bank bonds are getting 11 percent back and now that cv cv is on the brink of meeting their threshold does it mean they have to give their entire bond over to the world health organization that's exactly it sleepy waves I believe the 11% they have to give up all their funds the 7% they just weren't going to be paid the 7% uh, 
uh, I believe. Basically, consider the casino. They wouldn't put their money on a on on a long shot, right? That they were going to lose a big 11% return right on. They roll the dice. It, it, the bonds market, the derivatives market is just casino. It's a gamble, right? Japan should push the Olympics back. I'm with Lonely Piggy. Based on the numbers, the Olympics should not happen. Yes, with a distiller, you have to add magnesium, potassium, and other minerals back into the water because after distillation, it is pure. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful. Six times six times six. Six times six is 36. 36 times six. What's 36 times six, gang? We can do a little math here. 36 times six. 36 times. I'm not a calculator, so I use that. 216 people. Tokyo summers are super hot anyway, so a delay would definitely help. Chicho, it's a small amount compared to what China has spent. Yeah, it is. But for people, and by the way, these people that come up with these derivatives, they do the mathematics, put their stuff on, package it up nicely, right? They're salespeople, right? And then they sell $500 million. I think it was $500 million worth of derivatives on coronavirus or uh, uh, not coronavirus well coronavirus was actually named there but on pandemic right and on 500 million dollars worth of derivatives that they sold let's say they get anywhere between one to three percent or half a percent let's say one percent uh commission right they get five million dollars commission from doing a little math package packaging this up creating some charts making a graph selling it to people 500 million they get a five million dollar kickback I am not a not a vengeful person, but people who are trying to profit off the suffering of others are the only ones who deserve to get coronavirus. So you're saying that who has a monetary incentive to create pandemics? Busy Freeman, it, it's crazy. If you go down the rabbit hole of this, it's crazy. And the whole excuse for these bonds was, oh, the money would be available if they needed it really fast. But the money will not be available if they need it really fast. It's just derivatives. It's Wall Street. Things associated with Wall Street are detrimental to humanity. I just did the math on six degrees in my pub. Everyone infected in an hour. <laughs> Martin, I can see you now wearing a mask and gloves and a whole oxygen tank giving giving out drinks to people, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure maybe uh, you get a lot of people coming in going look at this look at this bloke here as a population develops immunity does the spread slow down hopefully like what happened with SARS hopefully hopefully do we have more details on potential source and whether it still might not be controlled we don't know that uh, we can't trust what's coming out to a certain degree right that's just four people transfer as well wow they've changed what they think the source is about three to four times now they just are confident it came from meat market in wuhan where does the 11 percent interest come from though when you invest in a pandemic bond like that from the people who made this derivatives not the who made this derivatives but the people who are taking on this bet so for example me and you are going to make a bet right by the way I have dates here, right? Me and you are going to make a bet. I'm going to bet that I'm going to, well, someone, let's say you and someone else on chat are going to make a bet, right? You're going to bet that I'm going to eat all these dates during this live stream. The other person is going to say, no, he hasn't eaten any. He's not going to eat all of them, finish all of them this stream, right? And because we're into, we're <laughs> into two hours of the stream, the odds of me eating all these things is not very much right so that person says you know what i'll give you five to one odds that he's not going to eat all five right you say you take that bet so you put a ten dollars online right that i'm not going to eat all these i'm going to eat all these and he puts a hundred dollars online saying i'm going to eat all these right who wins who who pays who 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 collects the money it's the opposite side of the trade right now for me if on wall street 
on the side i have chat going right and the guy is my hookup is is linked up to me and he said chicho he took the bet right and i eat all five of these within the next minute and he put up a hundred he keeps his hundred he takes your 10 and for me that i cut a deal with him he pays me five and he keeps five you end up losing right or the other way around yeah crazy realization can they ban all potential identified um identified continuing source sources of this corona in all countries we don't know where it's from can you ban bats if it's from bats i work in a home for retirees whole building is essentially a lockdown from cases of flu need to wear masks gloves change each uh, change each whenever you go to another level of the building i can't imagine how more intense it would be if covid versus flu yeah we only have one hour guys we only have one hour he did man we, we've been at this two hours now good morning Johanna. good morning i think i have my gas mask from my army i have one too for geophysics because i've gone into areas doing geophysics where you need to wear a mask right with the two filters you put on there they are saying this could be worse than the ebola and zika ebola wasn't uh, it was contained right that's the spencer by the door so you eat dates and get corona i hope not i wash these there's always someone on the other side will be a winner and a loser yep Ah, Captain America. I love dates too. That's how the market works. Mmm. Coolio. Great. Great advice. Make liqueur with dates. Maybe we give it a shot. Actually, we will give it a shot. why would you risk a hundred dollars to win 10 there's lots of bets like that government's banned because the odds government's banned bats batman cries in his cave i'm so glad i'm getting drunk tonight martin i'm hungover from last night oh no two billionaires can buy each other's trades and bid up the price of anything and as people take the bait and jump in the reap the rewards busy freeman this is exactly what happens on wall street right it's illegal but trying to catch them doing it doesn't happen and the big boys get away with it and the banks do this as well so is there a soft uh, software program that computationally simulates viral infection uh, diffusion throughout the world um, not that I've seen not open source anyway lots of conversation by the way um, for those I know this has been popping up for those that have followed for those that have subbed thank you very much for the follows and the sub I know I didn't mention this earlier but appreciate it okay and thank you for being here and thank you for the conversations um, I've scrolled down to the bottom again to COVID-19 is a great wake-up call for people imagine imagine it would have a fatality rate. Oof. it would die out if it had a fatality rate of 50 percent right as long as the incubation period wasn't two month two two weeks to a month right i don't get hangover what sucks is that i do brazilian jiu-jitsu and choose to stop going to going this month I'm basically trading sweat with other people. Yeah, Zara, I wouldn't go either. Okay. I've stopped going to the gym because of it. Okay. I used medical herbs last night. Good. Is this pandemic bond associated with Wall Street? Your guess is good as mine, Sleepy Waves. You're in New York. It's called Plague Inc. Anyone played a board game pandemic? I haven't. No not as fun now to play <laughs> no i wouldn't be china banned the plague inc 
game this month. Did they? Wait, is this real? Oh, it is. Another night user. Up time. We've been at this for two hours. Sleepy waves. Can we call it a pandemic yet? It is. It is. What are the criteria? Actually, I read the criteria. Because the bond thing, the derivatives that were created, I read the the criteria for a pandemic. It fits the pandemic, right? I will stock up some water, beans, rice, vitamins, Tylenol, and toilet paper tomorrow. A good idea to have a supply for a little bit. The criteria is judged by the market. Chicho, can we do a monopoly strategy stream? Hannah, uh, I have one plan to do, but man, I'm so behind everything. Uh, and I need to, just because of what's going on on YouTube, I've had to spend a lot of time decentralizing and all this jazz right so the powers that be are slowing down our production right the censorship um the way i've had to deal with things and certain other things have come into play that i need to do before uh those things so um we will do it at some point let's try for three hours oh i wish i could right now i can't do three hours right now yeah, flat. Two weeks supply should be fine. Yeah. Oh, the criteria. Uh, toilet paper, I get longer. Oh, the criteria is the bond re requirements. Wow. It's crazy. That bond thing was crazy. 24 hour Fatshu stream. That, that's the dream. Spider Man, uh, I hope it never happens, but if anything happens to Julian Assange, we will do a multi hour stream for multiple days. Still laugh. You're a triple Gemini, Chicho. That's so many thoughts at the same time, as you can tell, right? <laughs> I got my critique uh, in. I'm so ready for anything that comes. <laughs> Any advice for getting into understanding math statistics? Um, you just have to start playing with the data. Find something that you're interested in. Follow the data. If you're interested in COVID-19, follow the data. Look at the graphs. You start getting a feel for the data. Once you start getting a feel for the data, start looking at the mathematics. So once you start to get a feel for the visual of what's happening, then look at the equations. That's the best way to learn math. One day uh, could be an Android wearable collected medical pulse data with sensors into a giant Google AI, AAI cloud to perhaps manage it better and send associated alerts. What percentage would you give this virus to have a real impact in the US. What percent? How much of an impact it will have in the US? 100%. It's going to have an impact in the US. It's having an impact in global economics. It's going to have an impact on US economics, Canadian economics, every economics in every country, right? We call it a stream. We're going to call it a stream. Stay informed, folks, and please wash your hands. Coolio said, thanks for the My pleasure. Cover your mouth when you cough too and avoid touching your face mouth in public yeah great advice gang thank you for the conversations everyone um what we're gonna do is uh, we'll do i'm not sure what streams we're gonna do next weekend um i will announce them later on this week we might end up if things play out in a certain way i may end up doing a stream earlier but expect the next stream announcement to come probably by wednesday or thursday uh, most likely next weekend and into next week there's a few things we got lined up that i want to get done as soon as we do i edit some videos and stuff we'll get that stuff done okay thank you uh martin for taking care of business thank you spider-man for taking care of business thank you chat for the great conversations uh the great advice okay and uh, thank you for the follows and the subs everyone and you can follow us on bitshoot and youtube uh if you want to see these videos after the live streams and other videos that i i do put out in 10 years when we're living in the mad max world i will remember these streams <laughs> me too <laughs> the plan gonna end up in the box okay gang I'm, I'm scrolling down have a fantastic fantastic rest of your sunday gang okay see you on the next streams my pleasure busy freeman Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Spider-Man. Peace, everyone.